Hey friends, and well, let me be honest, probably um, before this video is over, some of you will consider me as an enemy. Um, but I wanted to share a couple minutes about my thoughts, not only on the tragedies that we have been experiencing um, over these past months, and especially these last couple of days with the shootings of our black men, but what I'm coming to learn over my 23 year journey of being a white man living and ministering amongst my black family here in several inner cities of Chicago. And I'm, I'm going to speak very black and white because let's be honest, it's a black and white issue. Um, I want to take you to the book of Exodus, um, chapter 1, and I wanted to share a little bit of what took place prior to the rise of Moses. Um, when I read that, it talked about that the Pharaoh um, became concerned and very um, fearful that the Hebrew slaves were growing in number and in power. So in order to maintain their oppression, um, he put upon them great labor. He put upon the Hebrew slaves cruelty to keep them down. However, they still grew. And so he brought together some midwives and he instructed them that when a Hebrew boy was born, kill him. Well, these midwives did not follow, and the Hebrew slaves continued to grow. Eventually, the Pharaoh became so hatred and, and, uh, towards those Hebrew slaves that he made a decree. He put out an order that male baby boy Hebrew slaves were to be killed by casting them into the Nile River. Let's look at America. We brought blacks into this country as slaves. We never intended them to be anything other than a slave. But they began to grow in number and in power, and eventually they fought their way to some freedom. So we became even more cruel and to keep our black Americans down, we lynched, but yet they rose. So then we used the welfare system, the criminal justice system, to, to keep them down, to contain them, to destroy them, but yet they rose and they're rising. Then we built prisons and jails to hold them, yet they rose. And so now we are doing exactly what the Pharaoh did at the end, sending out a decree, kill him. So until we admit that when we wrote this constitution that all men are created equal, that we never intended to include our black brothers and sisters, our nation may end up facing exactly what the Egyptians faced when they refused to let God's people go. So I'm going to say this to my white fellow Americans, that the bloodshed that is on its way is not on the hands of our fellow black Americans, but is on our hands. We are the ones that are refusing to let God's people go. We are the ones that are refusing to acknowledge that we do not value our black brothers and sisters as equal individuals or equal Americans as us white men. And to my black brothers and sisters, the racial issues, as I've said, have been there from the very foundation. But why do we see it more? Because there's a shifting. 
See, us white men have been at the head since the foundation. But we've had a black president. And you know, we've done everything in our power to keep him from really changing things. Now we have another minority rising to the top, a white female. What does that say? Those of us who are white men who have been at the head are now starting to see and fear that we are going to become the tail. And we know what we've done to you. And so now we're fearful that you're going to do to us what we have done to you. But I will say this. I've lived in a black community for 23 years. I've never been treated the way that this country has treated my black Americans. So I call out my white Americans to say we better heed, repent, acknowledge, and change. Because if we don't, I just want to again say this, the bloodshed that we will experience is on our hands, not the hands of our fellow black Americans. I welcome your comments. I welcome your feedback. Hit me up on Facebook or go to my webpage at www.studio2911.org. Again, that's studio2911.org. I don't necessarily know the answer except for us white Americans need to repent Acknowledge the lies that we have taught. Acknowledge our value system of equality. It is not here. And it does not include our black brothers and sisters. And we need to change. And we need to change now. Thanks for your time. Bless you. Good afternoon there, my Facebook friends. This is Dana Stevens again coming to you from Chicago. Um, I want to share with you my thoughts concerning the election. Oh, but prior to getting into that, I want to lay the foundation from my first video concerning my thoughts on the killings of our black men. And, and what I laid there was, we as whites brought you as blacks to America for one purpose and one reason only, and that is to be a slave. And all of our systems were devised as ways to keep you oppressed under our control. But as you know, we have not been able to fully do that. So lastly, we have resorted to shooting and killing your men. Um, now from there, I want to go into Genesis chapter 15, starting at verse 12 and ending on verse 14. And it says that as the sun was going down, Abram, and we know who later became Abraham, fell into a deep sleep, and a terrifying darkness came down over him. Then the Lord said to Abram, You can be sure that your descendants will be strangers in a foreign land, where they will be oppressed as slaves for 400 years. I'm going to stop at verse 13 here, and I'll get to 14 in a second. I want to go to Trump. Donald Trump is not the Antichrist, but what he is, is he is the manifestation of the hidden hearts of white America. White Americans' hearts were revealed last night when Donald Trump rose to power. They revealed that they need and want a man who will protect their fears, their biases, and their hates, hatreds towards you as black Americans so that we can remain in control. That's it. It's not ignorance because education can break that. But it is a heart condition which only God can transform. So now I want to go back and I want to say to my white Americans where we were brought up and you know if you are white, that we are good people, that yeah, we might have a couple bad eggs in the bunch, but for the most part, we are just good people. And we would never ever think for a moment, Genesis chapter 15, verse 14, 
that says this, But I, God, will punish the nation that enslaves them. And in the end, they, you, my chosen black brothers and sisters, or the Hebrew slaves back in the New Testament, will come away with great wealth. White America, chapter 15 of Genesis, verse 14, is for us. God is going to punish us for how we have enslaved our black brothers and sisters, how we murdered Native American Indians in coming here to take their land. And why do I believe that is happening? And why is it so close? It was 400 years that the Hebrews were slaves in Egypt. Well, on August 20, in the year 1619, historically marks the early planting of the seeds of the American slave trade. Although American slavery was not a known institution at that time, this group of Africans were the first to go on record to be sold as involuntary laborers. That was August 20th of 1619. Add 400 to that. We are looking at 2019 will mark 400 years. And that's why I bring this message now to my black brothers and sisters that there is hope for you. Your oppressiveness and you being under the control in the hands of white America is coming to an end because your 400 years will be up in 2019. And I believe that you are direct descendants of Abraham. You are God's chosen people. And I understand that you're frustrated right now because President Obama came in office and it seems like things have only gotten more and more rough for you. But now I want to bring you into Exodus chapter 5. And I want to remind you that when Moses and Aaron went and spoke to Pharaoh and commanded and demanded him to let his people go, how did Pharaoh respond? Well, this is how he responded. In Exodus chapter 5, verse 6, it says, That same day Pharaoh sent this order to the Egyptian slave drivers and the Israelite foremen. Do not supply any more straw for making bricks. Make the people, make the slaves get it themselves, but still require them to make the same number of bricks as before. Don't reduce the quota. They are lazy. That's why they are crying out. Let us go and offer sacrifices to our God. But load them down with more work. Make them sweat. That will teach them to listen to lies. President Obama was in office asking the government or Pharaoh to let you go. But they rejected him. They did to him what the Pharaoh did to Moses. And because of that, they've turned up the heat. That's why the racism that we see now isn't new it's just forming because you, as God's people, are starting to say, let us go. And we, as white men, are refusing to do so. Therefore, we must put into power a man that will protect us so we can remain in control. But however, if you continue to read in Exodus chapter 5 and then go into Exodus chapter 6, then the Lord told Moses, now you will see that I will do to Pharaoh when he feels the force of my strong hand, he will let my people go. In fact, he will force them to leave his land. Therefore, now I say this to you, my black brothers and sisters. Therefore, God said, say to the people of Israel, I am the Lord. I will free you from your oppression and I will rescue you from your slavery in Egypt. 
your slavery here in America. I will redeem you with a powerful arm and great acts of judgment. I will claim you as my own people and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God who has freed you from the, your oppression in Egypt, from your oppression in America. And I will bring you into the land I swore to give Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will give it to you as your very own possession. I am the Lord. Today might be seen like gloom and doom for you, my black brothers and sisters. But greater than the Pharaoh is a God that has chosen you as his people, as direct descendants from Abraham. Your 400 years is coming to an end. Your oppression is coming to an end. Your freedom is on the brink. So what do we do? You start to get your lives in worshiping God. You return to your God. You dedicate your lives to Him. You seek His face and watch Him do the rest. So to my Facebook families and friends, some of this might be a lot for you to take in because we as white Christians have never taught you this truth. In fact, we have kept it from you to keep you from knowing who you really are. But God is about to bring judgment and the tables are about to turn. And you, my black brothers and sisters, are about to be released and be given what God has promised you. So I want you to hold on, my black brothers and sisters in America and across the world, and I want you to know that your God, your God, is about to, to move His mighty hand and show you that He has not forgotten about you, that He's heard your cries, and your deliverance is nigh. Thank you for listening. You can reach me at www.studio2911.org. Again, that's www.studio2911.studio2911.org. So on this day, be encouraged and know that we serve a mighty God. God bless you.